How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to today's progress, yesterday's plan. We are in the new year. This is the first episode for 2021. Happy New Year. Last week was Christmas on the day I did the last episode, and we got it done. I'm back in the studio now. I was traveling last week, and I took some of my equipment and did a, a broadcast um, remote from my studio. So I'm excited to be back in the studio. I'm excited to be talking about 2021. I'm excited to talk about 2021 because I don't feel as good as I thought I did or I thought I would coming into this new year. I don't know how you might have, um, I was going to say despedir de 2020, which is like say goodbye to 2020. I don't know what your mindset was leaving 2020 because I think we all agree it was a piece of year, right? Um, I don't know if you're like the glasses half half empty or half full for 2021. Um, I had some good feelings going into it and I've been setting myself up for this new year and I woke up and I started doing my day and something was off. I don't know how your new year today was, but mine is a little off. But that just means I can work on it and make it better. But there are some cool things that I'll say coming out of 2020 and setting up. And I don't know if you can see behind me, I spent like a day and a half trying to get these LEDs spliced and set up on the shelf behind me. I think it looks pretty cool. If you're listening, I'm describing a shelf behind me that I just set up with some LEDs. I just ordered a soldering kit because I kind of bootlegged it with some gaffer's tape, not even electrical tape. So it's just a setup now, the, only the green works. So heads up, I'll be working on that in the near future. Um, I mean, yeah, 2020 sucked. Who would agree? I would agree. I mean, I could have sworn, like going into 2020, it was like, you know, the whole this is my year. And it started off really well. I had three jobs lined up. I had three travel jobs lined up, which was finally coming together. If you don't know, I have a travel website, travelarios.com, and I do travel segments on there and contribute to the TV show California Life HD with those traveling segments. And it's finally all like been coming together. I made a really great contact with my friend now, Davey Sutton, a travel expert who I met on a press trip, who um, I'm putting it out there. I think I'd like her to be my first guest on here. We definitely need to catch up. There's been a year gone by with no traveling and stuff, which is right when we met. So if you're, if you're watching, Davey, you're listening, I'd love to have you on. But um, going back, 2020 started strong. Things were lining up. I was looking forward to it. I had just gone on another trip uh, with Davey to Banff, Canada. It went, with rent, rent, blah, blah. It went really well. Um, I got back, stopped in California. I got to visit my dad and show him. I always loved showing him um, the trips I go on and pictures and videos. He was always very proud and um, left to Fiji on my next trip in January, lined up back to back, excited. And my first night in Fiji, I got the phone call that my father had passed away. And then like, I think that's where 2020 really started crumbling down for me. And um, so I, I jumped on a plane right back. And um, I mean, the rest of 2020 goes from there, right? I mean, the pandemic started to, to really undergo its like mutation into like a worldwide emergency. So trips one after another were just getting canceled. Um, jobs were getting canceled. Uh, I, was, I was back and forth from California and Mexico City for a little bit because of dealing with the death of my father. But then travel was also getting kind of weird. And um, now look where we're at today. But I was one of the skeptics at first. I was uh, not sure this was like something to really be threatened or scared of. 
And I thought it was almost a hoax as well or just something being hyped up, overly hyped. And no, man, like, I don't need to tell you that this thing was real and this year really went south, right? So with that said, I think when we're faced with challenges and stuff like that, it really leaves room for opportunity to adapt, to do new things. I think, I think most innovations come from those types of moments of uncertainty or of, of need, of some sort of threat. And I think this whole year might have been like a practice, a uh, practice so for us to set up. I mean, I work in digital media. I'm all about digital media. So this has really left it this year um, transforming to like a digital form, right? I know that uh, many of us have had to work from home. A lot of you may have stayed working from home. I don't know how much you enjoy it. Some I've spoken with some people that really don't like it so much and some who have really loved it and don't see themselves going back to the old normality. Um, but many things have changed. I think, I don't know if you're an investor. I know if a lot of people who've invested in tech companies have really made a killing. I mean, Amazon has like almost tripled, I think, in the last year, uh, along with other uh, web services, right? Um, so if you're in that type of industry, I think maybe you see the bright side of things. Um, another thing that kind of took a spill, I think, on my end was I mentioned in one of the other podcasts I was working on a product that I'm having produced and manufactured in Mexico um, with a friend of mine. And I mean, that was early on in 2020. Everything just was going shut down after shutdown. Um, companies were being shut down. So that project got put on hold because we couldn't have it produced. And now we finally, I mentioned I was getting the samples in last week and that had to be put on hold again because again, we are not in the correct um, state, I guess. We're in, we're in code red, I guess you could call it here in Mexico where everything's like shut down. So I have to wait on that product again. So it's just a hurdle, just another hurdle to deal with, but I need to make sure that I stick to it. Um, sticking to it in the good and the bad is important. I think today I really realized that and felt that. And like I mentioned, my day didn't start so well, hence my year not starting so well and so strong. And I kind of have felt, I felt today like, I don't know, no motivation or no energy to do stuff. And I was very close to not even doing today's podcast. I wasn't just feeling it. And I was like, man, like I'll do it next week or something. And that would be a pattern that if I continued and followed through with it, I would just be in the same place. Maybe I was last year or worse. And then I made, you know, and I would just be failing myself in that because this I need to do this podcast every Friday. Every Friday, I need to do this. This is like an accountability thing for me. So if I didn't do it, I would not only, you know, for those of you listening, there would be no podcast. And I think I would have continued spiraling down a, a different pattern. And that kind of goes with the product I'm trying to um, roll out. These hurdles keep happening and like the date keeps getting pushed back and we have money invested into it, a lot of time, some trips down to a, um, Leon, Guanajuato. And, you know, it's really easy to stop doing something when you, you're not feeling it. And sometimes you're not feeling it for just a, a moment or a brief moment of time. And that decision to stop just could ruin everything. And I've done that before. And I'm really working on not doing that to myself anymore. So I found it in me, jumped in the shower, got clean, set up the studio, and I was like, I got to do it. There's definitely things to talk about. So um, that's just a small example of, 
of sticking to your um, projects, your plans, your passion, your, I mean, don't let the little negative moments turn it all upside down. It doesn't have to be that way. Um, I, small note, I moved my microphone. Um, I got some complaints and some comments like, hey, move the mic in different positions. So I hope it sounds better. I removed the pop filter because I figured I put it in a lower position where I won't be speaking right directly to it, but kind of across it. But I, I think I'm still getting some pops in there, so I apologize for that. Um, but hopefully it sounds well and doesn't look too bad if you're watching. Um, for those of you that commented on that, I hope you've watched this far and let me know what you think now of this new mic position. But um, yeah, another cool thing that I'm excited for this year is um, my next step in the hosting journey, um, which is the job search. And I wanna really continue it. I'm gonna get with my coach this week because I don't wanna lose steam. That's another one of the um, things of, you know, like if something doesn't feel good and you kind of stop and you completely stop, you don't give it the opportunity to, to reach its full potential. So I wanna pick up on the steam I have built up already and next thing is the job search. So I hope this week I could get with my coach and we could continue that. I don't want it to kind of slow down and, and then I forget about it or kind of put it on a different plate and don't follow through. So that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to. I've been dedicating more time to my YouTube channel. If you're watching, you're on the channel now. I hope you like and subscribe and see what kind of new stuff I'm going to be putting out. If you're listening, um, go ahead and search on YouTube for Sharkerio, Shark, E-R-I-O. That's my YouTube channel. And it's all kinds of stuff. So, I mean, literally all kinds of stuff and videos. And I've been trying to be more consistent with my uploading. Um, one goal I have in the next three months is to reach um, 1,000 subscribers. And the way I'm going to attempt to do that to start off is just be consistent with my uploads and the content I'm putting out. So I have a content schedule. This podcast and video podcast is one of those pieces of content I'll be putting out every week, every Friday. I'm also um, batching and scheduling videos to come out every Monday. Um, for the most part, those will be on like technology and different um, strategies and things we can do in digital media. So I just recently post a review on um, an RGB light that I recently purchased that I really like. You're seeing it now. Um, I also posted a review um, that's scheduled on this microphone that I'm using here. It's a low budget microphone. I'm not ashamed to say it. I'm glad to be using it. And I did a little review on my setup um, that'll be coming out. I Some tips on like backing up your hard drive was a recent video I put out. But um, I have a list. I have a list of videos that I want to produce. I have a list of videos that have been requested that I want to produce. And I want to make sure that I'm consistent on my production and consistent on my posting. So that's going to give me weekly videos on Monday and Friday. Um, I also added another video to that mix, which are walking tours. And my first one comes out on Wednesday, so stay tuned for that drop this Wednesday. It's a walking tour through Mexico City and Polanco. Um, I walked across Masaric, which is a very famous and popular and highly visited street here in Polanco. And I walked the whole thing, and it has commentary. I pointed some things out. It was on New Year's Eve during the pandemic. So you can see what uh, Masaric looks like right now during the pandemic here in Mexico City and what kind of people are walking around, how much of us are wearing our masks, what businesses are closed, which ones are open, things like that. So that I plan to do every uh, Wednesday, walking Wednesdays maybe, huh? Hashtag, I don't know. 
And um, yeah, and, and then with that schedule of regularly posted uh, content, it allows me, it will allow me to focus on other content as well that I'll sprinkle in here and there. And I think that content, now I'll be able to dedicate more time and maybe assets to as far as production goes. Um, because one thing I have noticed, for those of you that are producing content as well, I don't know if you face the same problem, is uh, I tend to focus a lot on one, um, one project, for example, and I want it to be perfect. And then the time I spend on it to be perfect and it never becomes perfect, that I never release one, maybe, or I spend so much time on it that I only post that one when I could have posted a lot more content. So right now what I'm doing is scheduling enough content out that I'll keep my post schedule regular and at the same time I'll have the time to dedicate to more production and more planning, writing, things like that while content is still being dropped. So it's like a little bit of hustling in the beginning, extra hustling to just get it stacked up and then going back and filling in those spots with more quality content i'll say and um yeah so stay tuned we'll see how that goes i mean i have a lot of ideas right so i think my strategy for this youtube channel is also a little i don't want to say unorthodox but it's kind of frowned upon in the youtube community as far as you know you're told to pick a niche stick to that niche and just keep that content consistent for that niche so people know what they're getting and they're coming to you because they know they're coming to you for, I don't know, ice cream videos. And all you produce is ice cream videos and you're the ice cream channel. Um, I can't do that. I've tried it, I have tried it, and I do have other channels, like I have my travel channel, which has, for reasons, stopped because I haven't been traveling. I have a ukulele channel that was doing really well. I think that was a proof that the niche strategy does work, but I just couldn't stick 100% to that ukulele because life just happens and I had to move and I didn't have my ukuleles and for whatever reason, I didn't stick to it. And I had my drifting channel when, when Eddie and I had eDrift.net and it was doing well and then it stopped and I didn't stick to drifting only, you know? And um, the only one that has stuck around is my Sharkario channel, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I don't have so much subscribers, but I think that's a fair place to post all my different videos. And um, I think it kind of has hurt me a bit in that I have posted so much stuff that's out there and different that I have seen how my subscribers will go up and down, up and down with different times. I mean, if you, if you do subscribe or if you're on there and you poke around through the video list, you'll see how I have things from drifting to rock climbing to ukulele to traveling to tech to unboxings and reviews. And my goal is to organize all of that into good playlists have a regular upload schedule. So if you are interested in those things, the ones that do, um, con that I continue to produce are produced regularly. So you're able to follow. And um, hopefully my strategy works. What do you think? Are you, are you more uh, conventional in the YouTube strategy and algorithm and think I'm setting myself up to fail? I hope not, but we'll find out, right? Um, What's another, another strategy? I mean, another thing for this year that goes along those lines of what I just mentioned about the videos and specifically the tech videos is I set myself out to create a course, a video, well, a digital media course, an online course. And my goal was when I first moved to Mexico City to just crank out and start that, that course. And if I would have stuck to my guns right now, hopefully, or I might have had a 
a pretty successful selling course and I just never completed it. And I don't know what the excuse for not completing it is or was. Um, I invested time, I invested money into that course and then never completed it. So I hope with this new mindset I'm moving into the year with, I pick that back up, I set out and I stick to it and I don't let like the inner criticism or the exterior criticism stop me from completing it. However it ends up good or bad or excellent and great, hopefully, I mean, I just have to complete it. So be on the lookout for that. It's called the Digital Media Fundamentals. I already have it um, almost planned out. I mean, I, I taught a class, a present, presential class, a, a, a class in, in person <laughs> at an adult school, digital media class, where I covered everything from creating your website, creating a blog with WordPress, learning the basics of photography, digital photography, and digital video um, creation, and then tying it all together to, to creating a blog that you can produce your content for, whatever it may be. And it was a cool class. It was a pilot class that went well. Um, I think maybe 25% of the class actually came back to do another semester and had their own blogs started from like a knitting blog. Somebody had a movie review blog. And I was very proud of those students and to have been able to contribute to them creating that. And um, I think I can do that again. And I look forward to doing that in this course. Um, that was a really cool class. Shout out to my boy Durf. If you're watching too, um, he took over that class and did a really great job as well. He's a, a cinematographer working on a feature film right now that he's about to wrap up. And actually, I think he's almost done. He's just scheduling his premiere, but um, he took that over. And it it's cool. It's cool that, uh, yeah, when I think back, I think it's cool how um, people just create things, you know? And when I think of that, that's kind of the purpose or intent I have behind the, the digital media fundamentals course is that, is just empowering people to be able to take the tools that we have and create something that they may be passionate about or wanna share or have a voice that they wanna be heard in create it, you know? I think um, I've helped a lot of other um, small businesses um, with my partner KJ where we would do workshops similar to the course that I was teaching and it's empowering people to use the technology that we have um, in its basic form, but to use it properly and be able to create things and create things either for their business or for their hobby. Uh, it's interesting because as a, you know, as a digital producer and video producer and uh, working with clients where we got to a point where most people, a lot of people couldn't, couldn't um, pay or didn't want to pay or I don't know how to describe that, but uh, everybody needs some form of marketing or digital media. And I was finding it that a lot of them would give us the excuse like, well, my cousin has a camera or this person will do it cheaper or this person will do it for free. And the main thing I got from that was twofold. One, okay, let you go do it for free then or let them do it. Two is, shoot, we're losing clients here. How can we like still retain these clients? And that's how we did the workshops. We're like, that's fine. Go do it. How about we teach you how to do it well, teach you how to do it in a way that you're going to do it professionally and get quality content. And we were doing them for free. And it was great because two things happened. They learned and they went out and they created their content and or came back for more consulting so they could continue to create their content. Or two, they realized what you're doing is special it's a trade, it's a craft, I need you to do it for me, I don't have the time, 
I don't, you know, they're running businesses. They're not video creators. So it allowed them to appreciate more the craft that we do. So, um, yeah, I went on kind of long on this one. I'm, I think I need that pop filter back because I know you're listening to that pop and it's making me, again, like in episode one, be super hyper conscious of my breathing and like I feel like I'm gonna pass out because I'm not breathing well and I'm trying not to say words with the letter P P because it pops shoot but um thanks for watching guys I think I'm gonna wrap it up here we're running out of time happy new year I think if you're like me and you felt this year not start off so strong or so positive like you may have wanted it to or expected it to or set out to be. It's just the beginning. Stick to it. Take those you know, negative moments where you feel not so good and use them as fuel. Really pay attention to it. Acknowledge that feeling and turn it around because you can do it. I know I could do it. I'm going to do that and I'm going to go focus on myself right now and set out to plan this year, be very conscious of what's going on. We could be innovative. We could find opportunity in things. So you can do it too. And stay tuned because this month I will have the first guests on. And, you know, I was thinking once a month, but we'll see how it goes. And I'll be judging by how receptive you are to the content. Maybe we have guests on more often. But stay tuned. Thank you for watching. We did it. I almost didn't do this podcast, but we did it. I did it with you. And um, stay tuned for next week. 2021 is going to be 2021. Peace.